How much of this mentality for risk aversion is due to just what happened in 2018? We are not going to start this year off on the right note. Well, it certainly has to do with everything that happened last year. It's just a carryover from the risk aversion that we saw. Unfortunately, 2019 is ripe with risk. Um, we've got not only volatility rising, borrowing costs rising in the U.S., but you know, clear slowdown in the U.S. economy, the Chinese economy. Today, the Eurozone PMI numbers were quite terrible. And earnings, which um, carried stocks for the better part of the first half of the year, are starting to suffer. And I think you know, a lot of that is going to um, cause additional losses in the, the financial markets, which will translate into additional risk aversion for um, currencies. All right, Sylvia, let's talk about the end of year trading action. The types of ETFs folks use to trade these markets are put out by Direction and other companies out there. How much of the trading action do you feel was due to technical reasons ar around tax loss harvesting or anything else around at the end of the year? Did you see anything sector specific that would indicate that people were just trying to maybe reposition themselves going into 2019? Yeah, I think there was definitely some repositioning and rebalancing into year end. 2018 was was a, or 2017 was such a great year. The beginning of 2018 all the way through September was a very solid year, and then we really saw stocks pull back in November and December. So you know, you certainly had pension funds, RAs, large, you know, family offices taking some, taking, locking some gains in, in terms of preparing for the volatility going into the end of the year. But we've also actually seen a lot of traders looking for short-term tactical opportunities. So in the last couple of weeks, you know, with these up and down swings in various sectors, we've seen some opportunities pop up for traders in the short term. Where are those opportunities, Sylvia? Just to, just to kind of put, put a point on them. Where are you seeing the action? So we've been seeing the we've been seeing the action, you know, prior to this this morning's uh, dismal open here. Over, you know, for the last two days, we've seen some funds flowing into emerging markets. For example, you know, we saw some weak PMI data from China this morning. But you have stability in Brazil. You have the potential for an agreement in tax tariffs. You know, you have uh, potential GDP growth in in China. You know, even with the weaker data coming out, they're still sort of projecting some decent G GDP growth. So I think a lot of investors were coming in on that. You know, absolutely beaten down sector and region and looking. For for potential upside. Uh, healthcare has been really good, so you've had a lot of innovation there. There are cash-heavy names, you know, aging population, strong M&A activity, strong FDA approvals. That's been a sector that's been poised to sort of grow. And then, you know, a lot of our clients and, and investors out there are just really looking for more diversified portfolios, so consumer staples, you know, things that have persistent demand and consistent div growth are, are definitely on top of the list for, for traders this year. All right, Kathy, I'm a former currency guy. Many of our viewers know that out there. And so I watch dollar yen pretty closely. 109, that's the handle that we are on right now. 109.08, the last trade there. At one point in the beginning of October, we were pushing 114. How much are currency traders and macro traders watching the yen for signs of what's to come in 2019? I think the yen is one of the currencies that has the greatest opportunity in 2019. As you said, we're around 109 in dollar yen. I think we'll easily see 105, maybe even 103. And I think that has to do with the fact that the dollar has peaked um, this uh, last year. And we could see you know, further downside in the markets, in um, risk appetite, and all that is going to weigh heavily on Japan. But in Japan, um, you're starting to see some um, green shoots too. So I mean, a, part, a lot of it doesn't have to do with Japan. It has to do with the market's risk appetite, but I think dollar yen is very much an attractive trade this year.